How to play the Lara, the last artifacts. To win, you're gonna need to have the most victory points, which are these symbols right here on the artifact cards. There are two types of energy in this game. Each player will have an identical remnant, which is just a fancy word for circle energy, starting circle energy, both identical decks of cards, 20 card decks, ranging from one to five strength. And then there is an artifact deck, which is the more powerful of the two energies, the triangle that also has victory points on it. They range from zero to your odd three. There's only one three, three strength artifacts. All right, anyway, so we'll shuffle those up to set up the game, shuffle the artifacts, and then each player will then replace out, each player will choose before seeing the artifacts that get to come out into the row, into the market, each player will choose secretly any seven cards from their starter deck of remnants to start the game with. So choose seven. I'll just choose a random seven. Four, five, six, seven. Very strategic. I love games where you can actually choose your starting hand. Four, five, six. There's still a nice five in there. Seven. Okay, so your remnant deck will go face down or whatever. And then they'll, of course, they'll have different color backs. And then shuffle the 15 artifacts like we did. And then put three of them out horizontally. Now, each artifact is a conflict. So you'll play your energy cards in front on your side to every conflict. So how this goes is, so at the same time, each player looks at their 20 card deck, makes a seven card opening hand, starting with the first player, roll off or whatever to determine first player. Each player takes, each player takes turns placing one energy from their hand into one of the three conflicts. A conflict, like I said, is one of the artifacts that you're gonna fight over. So let's say that yellow won the roll off, so yellow could play any card. So what kind of cards does this player want? Okay, you've got four spells. You pick a character before that. Yeah, you pick a character. They are they are represented by their four spells. You would put them in pretty much your tableau close to you, aka land row. And then, okay, so this particular character will read their abilities. Okay, for a green energy, green mana played into one of these columns, one of these conflicts, you will get to, you pass, you pass immediately. For the rest of this round, gain plus two energy in this conflict each time you would have a turn. This one says, name a color. Reveal a random card from your supply if it has the name color added to your hand. That one costs a yellow and a blue. This one costs any color. Energy of the color you played into this conflict can no longer be played here by other players. Look at another player's hands. Cards. That cost a purple and a red. While we're at it, let's go ahead and read this character. Myra the Fire Amazon. We all know who she looks like. All right, Inferno. Cost a red and a purple. Destroy all players' energy cards in this conflict, which is a column. Uh, Flaming Rain. A yellow and a purple destroy the energy cards in the highest strength among all players in this conflict. If there's a tie, destroy all tied cards. For a red, destroy any energy card with strength one or less in this conflict. Destroy any one energy card in this conflict. Okay, so you're represented by these four spells. And then, so let's say that yellow won the conflict. They wanna, they have really no overlapping colors over here. So let's say that for the victory points, we wanna win this zero. So let's say we'll come out kind of strong. We get to see we have a we have a spell overview of the cards that we have, of the spells that we have, and the opponent spells. So you don't have to just be looking at their cards all the time. 
But anyway, uh, let's say that we want to play a come out pretty strong. Let's go with the three to that zero. Then it would pass to the opponent's turn. They could play, let's say, okay. They have kind of a lot of overlapping colors. So with one red, as soon as you play an energy card, you can activate one of your spells. So let's say that they really want to win this zero, this zero strength artifact as well with three victory points on it. They could go like, okay, let's come in strong. We're going to look in our hand, see if we have a red. Yeah, we'll play a red right here. And then in hopes to, we can't, yeah, so we could play this spell right here. Okay, so right now, this player is winning so far this conflict. But, you know, what we can do, we can, after you play any energy card from hand, then you can activate one of your spells by placing it into that conflict. So, you have a red, you have the required cost to play this spell, one red, and then you can get rid of that spell for the rest of this round by placing it into the conflict. And then what does that one say? Destroy any energy card with strength one or less in this conflict. I'm tripping. You can't even do that, but we can use it for later though. Destroy any energy card with strength one or less. All right, so that one doesn't apply right now, but we just played a one to this conflict, three to one right now. Okay, anyway, you get the idea. Go back and forth playing one energy card. Whenever you play an energy card, you can activate one of your spells by putting it into the conflict, the column. Okay, back to the rules. Each player places their energy, either a starting remnant, starting deck remnant, or an artifact. You get to win these artifacts whenever the end of the round comes, and then you have the highest strength in the conflict. But we'll go over that in a second. Play goes back and forth until players pass. Whenever you you either pass because you don't want to or you don't have any cards to play. If you pass, then you're out for the round, but then the opponent can keep on playing cards for as long as they want to until they pass. Okay, um, any energy color can be attached to any artifact, doesn't matter the color. When you play it an energy card, you may activate one of your spells, like I said, in any conflict, not just the one where you just played an energy card. By placing the spell card into that artifact, into that conflict. Think of the three conflicts is pretty much Pokemon, if you ever play Pokemon. You must have the required energy on that conflict, aka column, in order to activate the spell. So in order to activate Death Plow, I'm going to need a blue, yellow, and a green energy in one of these conflicts aka columns basically one of the artifacts on my side okay um at the end of the round you return all of your spells back to your tableau aka your land roll and then the cool thing about artifacts is they always bounce back to hand so remnants they will get discarded at the end of the round to your personal discard pile but artifacts they always bounce back to hand so you can never discard the artifacts they're always going to be stuck in your hand okay when you pass you return any remaining starter slash remnant cards to your energy deck so say that you passed earlier then you have two cards remaining in your hand then you put those back into your starter energy remnant deck and then you can choose a fresh hand of seven minus the artifacts that you may have won when both players pass, each conflict is resolved. The highest total right now, if both players pass after playing one card, then of course the yellow player would take this artifact, zero strength artifact, but it has a whopping three victory points on it. That would be in their hand, so then they would choose six other, another six card energy hand with this artifact. Okay. okay now if there's a tie then no player wins the artifact it stays out there for the next round 
and discard all remnants used in this round to your personal discard pile. When you run out of remnants, you don't reshuffle, so be strategic. And then you will replace artifacts so that there are now three available. Always three available. And then pick a new seven card hand, including artifacts that must always in, be included in your hand. Next round begins with the player who played the last card in the last round. The end game trigger is at the beginning of the round when one of two things happen. When one, when someone can't make a seven card hand by virtue of not having enough cards in their remnant deck or not enough artifacts in hand. And then the second way the game, the end game triggers is that a player has seven or more artifacts that they've won throughout the course of the game. Different black card back. And then, uh, so the winner of the game is you'll count up who has the most victory points from all of their artifact cards. And that is the winner of the game. Yeah, I played it. I'll drop a, how did it? I'll drop a gameplay video of this soon. I love it. Check it out. And then later, there is an expansion that came with the Kickstarter. They've already done one Kickstarter. That one was successful. They delivered the products and they're going to re come out with the game. They're going to reissue the game. So be on the lookout for that. But I guess later, I'll be back with a kind of expansion video too. And as you can see, we've got. Big one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten characters so far. Ten, one, two, three, twelve characters. Twelve characters in the game, all with four signature spells or whatever that they come with. So, yeah, be on the lookout for more the Lara content and check them out on Kickstarter coming soon. All your games, like, comment, subscribe, and spark.